to the home. So will you tell me a little bit about how you've decorated your space? With a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the things have meaning. In fact, all of them, otherwise they wouldn't be there. And each has a story and a meaning and usually representing either a person or a, a point of view or a perspective, an idea. And so there it is. The first that went up was this one from the ACNU. That was theirs. And I don't like, obviously I don't like empty spaces, so you see all these pictures up on the areas of just the plain old utility room, but everything has to be decorated. To becoming conscious is an interesting phase, I think, because I knew as a child, I didn't have the words to know what it was I was rebelling against, but I was reacting very strongly to this dreadful era of the 40s and 50s when you were a girl, and the limitations that were just out there that were irrational. For example, at a certain point, my brother and I were both going to school. Our lives were the same, and she wanted me to do the dishes. So I, she, she, <laughs> I said, well, Paul is here. Why doesn't he ever do the dishes? And her answer infuriated me. She said, because you're a girl. And that did it. I never washed a dish. Until we were going to share, I wasn't going to do it, and I was very stubborn. And I must have been very difficult. And my mother didn't know how to handle and deal with this difficult child. And then, for example, her notion of success for me would be marriage and children and a clean home, you know, the good housewife, and clean window sills. And for me, that, that was not going to be the goal. What is feminism to you? Feminism is to me <laughs> caring, looking to create a society worth living in with shared relationships with everyone, all ages, intergenerational, looking to, instead of putting money into bombing people and military, I would get rid of all that and put it into creating a society that matters and working in ways. Because we're on the verge of automation, we're, we're, we're there. With many jobs being automated, people are unemployed because the machines are doing it. Well, do we need to have a money economy? How do we think beyond it? See, all of these ideas to me need to be opened up that we look at things differently. Why, I don't, why do I need paper? Why can't we, you know, we, we managed a long time, we've worked out systems in tribal units and small communities on a larger scale. How do we, today in our kind of economy, how do we shift things to make it human? And that is the exploration of all of that and the action towards is what feminism means to me. with an abusive man and then having another man rape you, like having these experiences with these men. That they were at the same time period. Oh, they were. They were in the same 50s. He was from 50, 
53, maybe to 54, very rarely did, did I share the violence that I had experienced myself was difficult to talk about with other women or other anybody. Because I felt, how did you let that happen? How could you be so stupid? Or It was a, sort of a blight on my own self-concept that I could accept or have this happen to me. How, when this, this man who was violent behaved the way he did and was stealing from me and doing things wouldn't it never have tolerated? Why did I tolerate it? So in that sense, there was a degree of shame that you don't exactly share this thing. Boy, was I dumb kind of thing and to let this happen. No. That's, that now I feel I need to share that because women are so violated and are so battered. In the subsequent relationships that you had with men, how did that, were you able to trust men again or were you always... Very no, no, I trusted people? men. But my relationships with men were, in a sense, very superficial, almost disregarding them. Because while I enjoyed some of the men in my life, they were not men, I, except for one person whom I very much cared for, and he was a Belgian man. And he was here in the United States um, at UCLA doing a, a project in research of tobacco DNA. And we had a marvelous time together. And I knew when he went back to Belgium that I would never find a human being who was at such a level, on so many levels, of an individual I could really love. What was your uh, relationship to the institution of marriage? Was that something? Zilch. <laughs> I have no feeling for it at all. No, I, I never wanted to be married. Why is that? Because I didn't think it was necessary. I mean, if I have a relationship with someone and, and we understand each other, that's fine with me, and I don't see that I have to be validated by the state or by a religious institution or whatever. And by and large, I still am indifferent towards it. And did the, the but I like the bonding that can happen either way. I mean, if people want to be married, it's, it's fine. And did you find that the men you dated, um, they had similar beliefs about marriage? Or did, did any of them want to get married? We never had those kinds of discussions. I, most of the men in my life are so completely obliterated, I can't even remember. They're literally gone from any memory at all. I can't believe it. But they were that meaningless, essentially, that I cannot remember them. Only for a few. I'd say three of them, and that's it. The others, zero. <laughs> and I'm sure they felt the same way about me. And in your life, was it a conscious decision to not have children? No, there was a period when I would, if, if I became pregnant, that, that was okay. But I never did, so it was never an issue, and I never thought of to actively pursue having children. I had enough to do with the children at school, and I really enjoyed them as my children. If you could interview any woman, who would it be, and why? Strangely enough, it would be my mother. To get those stories, I never got. Because I, I would have liked to have seen the world through her eyes. And what she had to go through, which of course, looking at it as an adult, she went through hell. <clears throat> and she was a survivor and very persistent. And she was going to make it, and she always did, and she always protected and provided for us. She was once sent away from her town of Odessa because there was going to be a pogrom. So, she, do you know pogrom? Yes. Okay, so she was a little girl. And then came the revolution, and then the hunger, because she left, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in 1924, 
from Constantinople, which means she went through that difficult period of transition. And my father and mother tried to escape, but were always sent back when they got to a frontier. So finally they made it out somehow and got to Constantinople and crossed over the, Red, the, uh, the Black Sea. And then coming here and then having him die relatively soon, 1924 to 35 isn't that far. And then to have to make it on her own by her wits and personality. And she had a marvelous personality. So I would have liked to have known in detail It's a little big. <laughs> the elastic's gone. Okay. I wouldn't stay in front of a mirror this long. What is your relationship to cosmetics? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I use soap. <laughs> um, I don't mind seeing other people with their, you know, coloring nails and so on and so on. But frankly, I like to leave my body the way it is. And that's my relationship to cosmetics. The industry would collapse immediately behind me. Did you, were you always like that or did you use? I used to use a lipstick. And I had different colors depending upon my clothes. But I haven't. Oh, when I went to Europe, I don't use deodorant either. I think the human body needs to sweat. And a lot of these are anti-sweat types of things, and I don't need to harm my body. And I find we don't smell, we're clean. I have yet to meet a smelly person, except for people who unfortunately live on the streets and have no access to being clean. But other than that, I don't mind human smells. I think smells are good for us to smell. We don't always have to be smelling pleasant. And certainly vaginal smells, I think, are absolutely, don't you dare put any lavender or any goddamn thing on my body. And what are you the most passionate about? Well, passionate, I am infuriated by injustice, arbitrary injustice, and treating people badly. It really bothers me. So that is something I respond to. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Isa. Happy birthday to you. You know, the idea of this when they, when Sati and Sharon said they wanted to, to, to do this, and then I expanded it to include the significant people in my life, little did I know I would be subjected to this. Yes! Yes! yes. Let's say that again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. today about uh, about when I have my 90s. Yeah. 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 So get ready. I've got a year to plan. Yeah. So she. Can so I done. said, well, you know, Can I don't know that I'll live long enough. But if I do, what do you think happens after you die? Like any other animal, I will disinter. Oh, my body is being given to medical research, with the understanding that there's MRSA. And I wouldn't take up space in the ground. Now we're going to transform the lake. Oh, oh my God. God. If I get to be 90. Oh. oh. And I don't think I'll invite you. <laughs> oh, sour grapes. <laughs> and so 
it is, I don't really like the idea of dying, but I know it's a fact, and that's why you better live it, girl, the way you feel it should be lived. <laughs> There's that beautiful smile. 